Welcome back to the Brahmin Word, and we are uh, continuing on with the life of Joseph, and he has given his recommendation um, to Pharaoh about the uh, not just the interpretation of the dreams, but what should happen next, a game plan, uh, basically, to how to cope against the upcoming seven years of, of plenty and then the seven years of famine. And so with that, now how does Pharaoh respond? And how he responds, but more how he describes Joseph is really interesting and I think is really encouraging uh, for us as believers. So turn back with me to Genesis chapter 41. We're going to go to verse 37. We're going to be looking at verses uh, 37 through uh, through 49 today. So with that, um, verse 37. This proposal pleased Pharaoh and all his servants good start. And Pharaoh said to his servants, can we find a man like this in whom is the spirit of God? I think that right there, verse 38, uh, is the most powerful up till when Joseph uh, reunites with his brothers. This is the most powerful part to me of the life of Joseph is verse 38 describing Joseph as a man in whom is the Spirit of God. And maybe not every single text, but a lot of versions will have Spirit here capitalized. And, and the reason that you do that is to make the connection between uh, with the Holy Spirit. And so we're talking about the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit indwelling Joseph. Uh, well, this is centuries before the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit comes to indwell the disciples. And so it's really quite fascinating that we see that here. We see this in the Old Testament too. It's not just the New Testament that we see the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, but I find that really fascinating uh, that we see that in the life of Joseph, that he is described as a man in whom is the Spirit of God. And how, as believers, how can we show that we are men and women in whom is the Spirit of God by, obviously, yes, by the things that we say, but the fact that we are so in tune with the with the Lord, that we are not only speaking on behalf of him, but that we are following that up with our actions. And I think for me, it's not just, Pharaoh's not just looking at this plan that is being presented by the words that's saying, but the fact that it is being presented by a man that was wrongfully taken from his home, sold into slavery, that was put in, under a, a stranger, blessed that stranger with his work ethic and his character, was then, uh, well, I guess defamed is the right word, but was wrongfully accused of a crime that he didn't commit by his former, uh, in, by his former master's wife, put into prison for two years, and yet still showed incredible character. I think that is where you get this statement from Pharaoh, this question from Pharaoh. How can we find this man if it's not Joseph? And so I think for me as a believer and for you as a believer, our goal is to strive to be more and more like Jesus. Yes, we will not be perfect, uh, but he's strived to be more and more like Jesus, where somebody says, can we find a man or woman like this in whom is the Spirit of God outside of you? Because you are so, you are striving to be so much like Jesus. It would be hard for us to find somebody else that is on on that same level. Again, not that we're perfect, but we're trying and striving to be more and more like Jesus. I think that's really interesting uh, to see in verse 38. 
So we've already covered two verses, and yet it's something that I want to take time on. Verse 38, I think, is incredibly powerful, not just in this section, but in the whole entire life of Joseph. And it can be so encouraging and so powerful for us as followers of Jesus today. So let's head back. Verse 39, Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has shown you all this, there is none so discerning and wise as you are. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall order themselves as you command. Only as regards the throne will I be greater than you. So he is making the connection that not only is Joseph wise and discerning, but he knows that God has shown him these things. And for us as believers, yes, we can be wise, and yes, we can be discerning, but the thing that separates us is the fact that we love and we follow, we serve Jesus Christ. That's what separates us uh, from others. So I think that's a really interesting point to see. Verse 41, And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt, which is culminating the dreams that Joseph had at the very beginning when we are introduced to him, when he is telling his brothers and his father the dreams that he is having. Now it's all coming together. Now granted, the brothers haven't come yet. His dad hasn't uh his dad hasn't come to Egypt yet, so it hasn't completely been fulfilled yet, but it's on the way there. And so you see that, and I think that's really interesting. The other thing I think is interesting, too, there's three separate discussions or declarations here. So first, can we fam can we find a man like this in whom is the Spirit of God? Uh, the second one, the wisdom and discernment of Joseph, and then the fact that he wants him over his house, uh, but he's not, but he's second in command of the whole entire country, uh, or of his house. But then the third statement is uh, that he is over all the land of Egypt, outside of Pharaoh, of course, is the number one, but. Joseph is the number two over all the land of Egypt. Uh, I think that's really interesting. Those three separate uh, conversations or declarations, uh, probably is a better word, the three declarations that Pharaoh says to Joseph, um, I think that's not a, that's definitely not a coincidence. And I think that's really interesting to see. Verse 42, Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from him, from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and clothed him in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him ride in his second chariot. And they called out before him, Bow the knee. Thus he set him over all the land of Egypt. So he basically gives these things, the signet ring, um, the garments of fine linen, gold chain, putting him in his second chariot is to show that he is completely on board with the plan that he has just put into place, being Pharaoh. Uh, Pharaoh is completely on board with what is about to happen. And uh, yeah, again, just the fulfillment of these dreams that Joseph had as a young, as a young man, as a boy, is coming together. And that's really, really interesting to see. Verse 44, Moreover, Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh. Without your consent, no one shall lift up hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. So we have a fourth declaration. Uh, he says, look, yes, I am in charge, but uh, there is nothing, nothing could go on without your knowledge and without your wisdom into that situation. So you have these four statements just growing the authority and the character of Joseph here. Uh, just really fascinating stuff. But then he gives him a a new name, which is interesting. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zaphnath Penea, and he gave him a marriage, Asenath, uh, or Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. So Joseph went out over the land of Egypt. Um, 
It is interesting, and we'll talk a little bit more about this uh, on Thursday, but it is interesting that Joseph takes the daughter of a priest of a foreign god, uh, of a pagan god. Is this then wrong of Joseph to do? First off, it is. It does. It does seem to be an arranged marriage. It is not uh, Joseph's choice uh, that he marries uh, Asenath. It does look like Pharaoh is the one uh, that puts this together. So, but I wonder in the back of my mind if Asenath comes to know and follow Jehovah uh, at some point. That is that's interesting because with the character of Joseph, you would think that that and his faith would rub off on his wife at some point. Um, we never really know, and so it's something interesting to uh, to kind of think about in the back of, uh, of the mind. But now let's see a little bit more here about Joseph as he gets going with this plan. Verse 46. Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh, went through all the land of Egypt. So he's only 30 years old, which is uh, quite striking because it seems like we've known him for a while. Um, but it's really cool to see how God uses a young person uh, to do just these impossible and kind of crazy things. Now, in this day and age, 30 was not looked at as incredibly young. It was kind of like middle age almost. Um, but still, it, it's fascinating to see how far Joseph has come and that his 28th and 29th years were spent in prison. Um, but now he's the second in command in Egypt. Uh, just pretty crazy stuff, right? So verse 47, during the seven plentiful years, the earth produced abundantly and he gathered up all the food of these seven years, which occurred in the land of Egypt and put the food in the cities. He put in every city the food from the fields around it. And Joseph stored up grain in great abundance, like the sand of the sea until he ceased to measure it for it could not be measured. So, Joseph puts together this plan that he is going to just start using the cities as kind of like storehouses uh, for this abundance of grain. And yes, it gets to a point where it cannot be measured, but it, I'm so glad it did because the famine itself will be of such destruction that it cannot be measured either. And so it's interesting to see that. But then too, so Joseph at the end of these seven and seven years, so he, he'll be about 44 years old. So really in the prime of his life, he is, he is working this plan and Yes, it makes sense, like seven years, uh, yeah, that's that should be plenty of time uh, to bring in a really, really good harvest, right? But then you have to think, that's followed immediately by seven years of nothing, of nothing, no harvest at all. And that's where we're about to turn to uh, on Thursday as we end chapter 41 and see how does Joseph go about when it comes to the beginning of the seven years of famine and really just kind of destruction. Uh, so we will see that on Thursday. So I will see you then. Thanks.